Hi everyone, and welcome to How to Create Falling Snow Particles in After Effects. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist with over 10 years of experience, and in this video, we'll take you through step by step on how to create this cool winter weather effect and use them in your animations and video projects. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With just one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to a massive library of assets, millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing, and you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description below. In the Envato Elements website, we can take a look at graphical backgrounds and even stock video footage that you can use in combination with the snow effect. For this video, we'll be using this awesome winter background created by Henrik Evanson. So the first thing we want to do is create a new composition. So let's go to Composition, New Composition, or Control N on the keyboard. And then from here, we can edit the settings for our composition. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep the uh, width and the height of our composition so that it's the same as our animation and then we want to change the composition name and rename it to snow keep it at 30 frames per second and we want to change the duration of the animation to 10 seconds but we can always change this afterwards if we decide to later on click ok to create the composition great next we want to create a new solid so go to layer, new and solid or control Y on the keyboard. And then we want to make sure that it's set to the color black. And let's name this solid particles. Again, make sure that the size, the width and the height is the same as our composition and then click OK to create this new particles layer. And then from there, we want to add CC particle worlds to the solid. So go to effect and find simulation at the bottom here. And then we want to find CC particle worlds. So click on that to add that to our particle layer like so. Awesome. Now you'll see straight away that if we scrub back and forth in our timeline, it adds this sort of yellow fountain of fireworks effect, which is the default look of CT particle world. And we can change that using some of the settings on the left here inside the effect controls panel. So let's start at the top here where we've got grids and guides. So let's open that up. And from here, we want to turn off a few of these settings. So let's turn off the grids and guides here as they can be a little bit distracting, like so. Just turn them all off and then collapse that. Excellent. And then once we've done that, we want to look at the birth rate and the longevity. Now, the birth rate represents how many particles are being created or born, which basically means increasing this value increases the amount of particles we have in the scene, like so, and decreasing it makes it so that we have less particles. Now, because we just want a gentle falling snow, I'm going to set the value to something like 0.3 but feel free to adjust the number a little bit higher later on if you decide you want to have more snow. Next is the longevity, which is how long the particles will last for once it has been created. So let's set this value to about five seconds so that the snow lasts longer as we want the snow particles to last a little bit more as it floats slowly past the screen. Next, we have the producer. Now under here, 
it represents the area that the particles are going to be created or born from. Now, because we want the snow to fall from the sky, we can adjust the Y position here so that the producer moves up into the scene, like so. So something like minus 0.7 will do. So now it's appearing at the top here. We can also play about with the other values to find the right place for where the snow will fall from. Let's also move the producer back or forwards a little bit by 0.3 on the Z axis. And we can also increase its radius, so how large the producer is, by increasing the area in the X axis. So let's go ahead and increase this like so. So it fits across the whole screen. So something along the lines of 0.7 like that and if we move our position down in the oh, down in the y axis you'll see now how this is affecting the whole scene like so make sure to put that position on the z axis back to 0 0.3 input a value of 1.5 on radius z just to make it a little bit deeper. And now you can see that if we scrub back and forward in our timeline, it appears that the particles are falling down from the sky, which is exactly what we want. Next are the physics options. So let's go and open up the physics options here. Now in animation, you'll see that the type of animation we've got here is explosive. So for snow, we want to change that to twirly. This will give the best results as it will make the snowflakes floaty and randomly falling. Now we want to keep the velocity at 1. Lowering this will reduce the twirly effect of the animation, like so. And for the gravity, we can reduce this value here to 0.0. 0.03, which will give the particles a slower movement falling down. Next, we want to look at the extra angle here. Let's set the value here to something like 20 degrees, like so. And now, if we go ahead and preview this, you'll see that our snow effect is starting to take shape. Next, let's go to the particle settings down at the bottom here. And here we can change the way the particle looks via the drop down menu here. However, we're going to actually create our own particle shape. Create a new composition. And this time we're going to call it snowflake like so. The width, we're going to set it at 40 pixels and the height also at 40 pixels. Click OK. And now let's zoom in here with the mouse wheel to see what we're doing. And then we want to create a new shape layer. So go to Layer, New, and select Shape Layer, like so. Then under Add, which is next to our shape layer here, we want to go ahead and choose ellipse to add an ellipse shape. And then we also want to add a fill. And for the fill here, let's open this up. We want to change the color to white for our snowflake, like so. And then after that, let's go ahead and change the actual size of our ellipse so that it fits our square, like that. And then once we've done that, we want to change the shape of our snowflake. So to do this, again, go to Add, and then we want to go ahead and choose Wiggle Path. So I'm just going to raise this here so you can see. So under Add, choose wiggle paths to add wiggle paths here and you can see straight away it's changed the shape of our snowflake like so 
Awesome. Now let's play about with the wiggle pass option underneath here to change it into a shape that we want. So for points, let's change this to smooth. And then for size, let's change this to 17. And for detail, let's change this to three. Wiggles per second, let's change this to 0.2 to add some subtle movement to the snowflake. So you can see here as we scrub back and forth in the timeline, you'll see how it changes the shape subtly. And then for the rest, let's go ahead and leave it at the default options. Now let's go ahead and return back to the original snow composition here go to the project panel and we're just going to click and drag the snowflake composition into our scene like so and then we're going to click on the eye icon here to hide it. Awesome. Now click back on our particles layer, go back to the effect controls panel and then in the particle section here we're going to change the particle type from line to textured quad polygon and then inside texture we want to choose the snowflake here as our source like so and then straight away you'll see the particles have changed to the snowflakes that we created now some quick adjustments to the particle to finish it off set the rotation speed to 15 the initial rotation at 360 the rotational axis at any axis and change the birth size to 0.1 as well as the death size just to reduce the size of our snowflake. Size variation will leave it at 50% and a max opacity of 75%. And now if we go ahead and preview the scene by clicking on the play button here you can test the snowfall effect and make any adjustments to it if we see fit. So you can see here that the snow effect is a little bit too twirly at the moment. So it's moving a little bit too fast for my liking. So let's go back into the physics options here and we're going to change the extra angle here. So the value from one to zero and perhaps change the velocity as well to lower it down to 0.9 and now hopefully if we click on the play preview button you'll see that our snow has calmed down a little bit awesome now all we need to do from here is go back to the project panel and if we click on our background here we can go ahead and choose our snow composition. Click and drag that on top like so. And then if we click on play, you'll see that we've got some nice falling snow effects added into our scene. Now let's go ahead and go back to the snow here and let's increase the amount of snow we've got to our scene. So the birth rate here, let's increase that to something like two, just to fill the scene up a little bit more. And we can also move the particle layer here and move that all the way forwards in uh, backwards in our timeline. So you'll see that the animation starts with our falling snow and then just increase this so that it fills up the whole 10 seconds. Go back into our background composition, click play, and then just preview how it looks like. And you can continue to go back and forth between compositions to make any sort of adjustments. So if we wanted to increase the snow even further, so let's double the snow and make it four Go back into our background composition and continue to play about with it. Awesome. So that's it for this video. 
feel free to experiment with the different options and effects in the particle CC settings and to use the snow effect for your own animations or video projects. If you liked this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, check out some of the other tutorials in the channel. Have fun and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.